Hello, hello. I'm just going to put this down and call it the white elephant in the room. We'll get to this one. So running with some of the other themes that's going on today, I'm a musician. Uh, I guess that's my night job. My day job is producing records. And here in Houston, I teach a lot. Everything from juniors and seniors at Christa Ray Jesuit. I teach the juniors ethnomusicology. And I have 26 of them. And they play. They play. Um, it's mostly drumming based. But they come in with pretty much zero musical background. And we just finished playing an arrangement of a salsa tune by Hector Laveau, which is great. My seniors um, are learning to record music in a program called Ableton Live, and they are learning to produce and learning to write music uh, and compose, even though none of them know how to read music or know anything behind it. The whole point behind that, and it weighs into other teaching I do, I teach production at Houston Community College, I work with the dance department at University of Houston, and I teach little, little kids, four, five, six years old, um, which is all a blast. Part of being a musician is you can only perform so much during the day. So almost everyone I know who does this professionally, we all teach. And it's a great way to keep your knowledge good, keep your practice good, but also really just get to know what it is that you do. What is your connection to music? And what I can share is that my connection to music is connection. As a drummer, I'm a team player. I don't even like drum solos. I don't, I don't think most people want to go buy a t-shirt or a beer when you have the drum solo happening. But what I do like is providing a context to keep everyone working together. I love playing dance music. My main gig is a band called Escort. We play live disco, and it is an absolute blast creating an environment for people to move and connect in. Because what do we have? What we have is the oldest language in the book. Everyone here is a musician. You were before you could walk. You were before you could talk. My son is two and a half years old, and before he could even say dada, he could sing his favorite song or clap in rhythm. I didn't teach him that. I'm not forcing anything on him. He just picked that up. So from before you are verbal, before you're ambulatory, you are a musician. This is the first connection you have. The, the sound of your parents singing is probably the most important connection you've got. So what I have here is a really big drum. They come bigger, but this one's a good size. My dad's from India, from North India, in a state called Punjab. And this is a drum from there, purchased in Delhi, but made in Punjab. Anyone know what it's called? Yeah, this is why I love being in Sugar Land. I get a yes. <laughs> this is called the dole. So dole from like, let's say from Romania over to China. Dole essentially just means two-headed drum. There's Armenian versions of the dole. There's Turkmen versions of the dole. It's always a drum that's got two sides, and you play both sides. So let's go through the ecology of this guy. I've got a big wooden shell here. This is one piece. Uh, if you buy a drum made in the States, it's made out of plywood. This, you have to cut down a tree, put it on a lathe, and hollow it out. It takes about four or five days. Then you got to let it dry. Then you got to carve it, which takes about a month. I know this because I hired a guy to do it. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> it comes with a strap, easy for carrying. And then I've got, as I said, two heads. Played with sticks. So this one plays the one on my left side. This is called the dugga. It's curved. No one knows why. Seriously. In a culture where the classical music is thousands of years old and codified down to everything, when you play tabla, you have a name for every note. And you have compositions that are composed hundreds of years old down to you know, every 128th measure that you repeat. You have lots and lots of context. But in Dole, this is a folk instrument. So a lot of stuff got lost. We have no idea why this is curved. When I ask the people, they say, well, we like to play with the roots, and it's less work to just straighten it out. So they cut up the root from a tree that's nice and heavy, and here we go. This stick uh, I use for my right hand. This is called a tili, or chati. It's made out of cane, really, really flexible. So what does that do? Well. The way the drum sounds, the way the drums play, the rhythms that are played on the instrument, sure, they're culturally significant, but they're that way sort of because these are my tools. So let's look at what I've got. I've got a low note called ge, a high note called na. And as you can see, there's not a ton of subtlety in here. This is a loud drum. It's quite easy to connect to, right? So the so dole in Punjab is almost 
mythical. This is a community drum. This is meant for accompanying weddings, and mostly weddings, and weddings and celebrations, and weddings and weddings and weddings and weddings. This is a drum of celebration. This is a drum of community. Um, even when you see videos, songs that don't have dole in it, you might see the pictures of it because just the iconography of this instrument um, connects people together. The Punjabi diaspora could be, you know, wholly put together just by the dole. People will connect around that. Food, sure, food has regional differences, but this drum from the Dawaba over to Himachal Pradesh, everywhere else in Punjab, including Pakistan, this is the guy. So, what does it sound like? Let's see. Again, this stick, since it's so wispy, it's hard for me to just play straight, but it's very easy for me to swing and sort of roll along like that. Then on my low side, I have all the punctuation over here, all the exclamation points that make the rhythm exciting. So people ask, what's the significance of all those rhythms? Well, uh, they're A, made for people to move to. This is not a sitting down instrument. This is not art music. This is physical music. And at a broader sense, um, when you go to certain temples, when you go especially in uh, Lahore, this is an instrument used to accompany really intense worship. And uh, the rhythm played is this. at about 11 p.m. By 3 a.m., <laughs> intense. The rhythm's called damal. Anyone want to translate for me? Fun, yeah, but more like wild abandon. Um, and it plays into the sort of relationship of Sufi worship being a mystic relationship between you and your God, but the music is the pathway to it, and it's essentially just intoxication. So what do we have here? Everyone's a musician. Everyone's connected via music. Rhythm's the basis of music. This big drum gives you rhythm. I do it right, it might get you on the way to God. Thank you. <laughs>